Hello and welcome to my video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to install the Cobbs intercooler for their Stage 2 performance package, doing a fully detailed step-by-step -step guide, and this will be part of a multi-part series in how to fully upgrade into Stage 2 for Cobb. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, we'll begin with a 12mm socket to remove these two bolts here. This one bolt attaching to the intercooler and these three bolts here and afterwards we'll be removing this uh, metal bracket as well next we'll carefully pop out this retainer clip here before we can fully take out the intercooler and you can use something small like a little uh, pig or flathead or what have you so let's get to it That should be good enough. Now we should be able to pull out this hose from the uh, charge pipe and then take out the entire assembly. With our original intercooler taken out, we're next going to remove this portion of the charge pipe and install it into the new one by taking out these three bolts here with our 12mm socket. Afterwards, carefully with a pick, or a flathead like I'm using, remove this interior o-ring and we're going to move on to the new intercooler. On the cob intercooler, just gently install the o-ring along its groove. There we go, all set. Should look something like this. Back to our charge pipe, using either a 7mm uh, socket or even just a standard flathead screwdriver. We're gonna loosen these two clamps. All right, with our clamps on loosen, we should be able to take out these two pieces with a little bit of force from the rest of our pipe. So let's do that and I'll show you after. As a quick tip, as I was ha having some trouble taking this, uh, this out, it'll help if with your flathead, you kind of gently pry this off the charge pipe all around. Do that and it should make taking this out much easier. Alrighty, our quick connect and a rubber coupler are removed. We can take the rubber coupler and its two clamps, we'll put them aside as we won't need those anymore. But hold on to your quick connect and your pipe. We'll come back to that in a moment. On our original intercooler, we're now gonna have to push out the both the rubber and the metal inserts from both sides. Within this orientation, don't forget it. And we're gonna install those into the new intercooler. There we go, and just repeat that for the other side. On the new cob intercooler, we're gonna grab the rubber insert, insert this fully in first, and our metal one will go from the bottom and up, both sides. Next, using Cobb's provided coupler and clamps, we'll simply attach this onto our pipe like so, fully installed. We can slide both of our clamps over, and just one very important step, and do not get this wrong. On our quick connect here, you'll see there's a smooth side and a side with the lip, a barb. The side with the lip is gonna go into our, chart, into our pipe here, which goes into our intercooler. All right, so it'll be our pipe, coupler, and the barb side installed this way. I'll do that, and then I'll show you the finished product. Okay. This is what it looks like with our coupler fully installed, clamps are tightened, and same thing, you can either do that with a flathead or an 8mm eight, eight socket in this case. They're a little bit bigger than the stock ones. Last step before we can begin reassembly of the intercooler, let's just attach our pipe again, where we originally took it out with using our three bolts. With our new cob intercooler fully assembled, we're going to begin to install that back into our engine bay. Thank you. 
to make sure that your charge pipe quick connect portion is fully inserted into your charge pipe and that the clip goes down fully on all sides. Do double check that your um, coupler is fully inserted and it won't come out easy. We'll now loosely reinstall back the bracket we're taking it out, like so. Lastly, we're just gonna assemble all the bolts back on. You can start with your bra bracket here. Don't fully tighten it yet, leave it somewhat loose. Then go over to the other side here. And hopefully these two holes should line up for you. And if they do, go ahead and start uh, torquing down your bolts here. And I did have an issue and I do want to point out. If for whatever reason the hole on this side doesn't line up, what I had to do was just unloosen these two brackets slightly and it gives me some wiggle room to position the whole location for, for where this mounts. So try that and if that works then just tighten this down and then these back. In order, you want to fully tighten these down and then your left side and finally with your right. And there we have it. Our new Cobb intercooler is fully installed. Wasn't too bad, was it? And now we only have one thing left to do, and that is to install our new intake shroud. To remove our intake shroud, all we gotta do is remove all these clips all along the perimeter of the shroud, and lock on some screws with a simple Phillips screwdriver. Make sure that you don't forget these ones as well. There's one about here and on this side body panel clips and I'll show you how to take one out right now. To remove these clips all you need is a flat tool like this come in from the bottom side and then just more or less pop it open and it should come out like so. Afterwards just simply grab and pull it out. Back to our shroud assembly we're now going to remove the OEM air tunnel here by disconnecting all these plastic rivets that attach it which I believe should be able to be done by hand. So I'll give that a shot, if not, then we can either try using the pliers or we can drill them out with a small drill bit. Okay, here we go. Make sure you wear eye protection, because these little pieces can potentially fly towards your face. <laughs> there we go, that about does it. All right, next step is we're now going to remove each and every single rivet all around along the perimeter, like this one here. And I think we can do so with our pliers, like so. Easy enough. There we go. As you can see, all the rivets have been removed. Now we can move on to the next step. For this next part, we're going to take our cop thrust tunnel along with the weather strip and we're going to place it all around this top edge here. You can begin by this side, more or less line up the insert, get it in. And for these corner sections, you're going to need a pair of wire cutters, like so. And it'll help to make a V notch, if I can more or less show you how about from here to there like so. That way it'll wrap around nice and smoothly along the corner. So let's try to do that. And it should look something like this. One thing to note is make sure you only cut the outside portion of, of this uh, strip bottom section and not the inside. As you can see it's double sided where it inserts. That way on the inside you'll get a nice better seal. Once you got most of the weather strip all around the tunnel, you can kind of see my job here. Kind of mess up a little bit in this corner but eh, it'll do fine. As long as the seal is on the inside and primarily this will be point of contact anyway, you should be good to go around the corner like so and then we have an overlap what we got to do now is just trim accordingly until we get a tight 
flush fit at this point here. So again, better safe than sorry. Cut more than you think you need. Compare, check, and then just keep cutting until you finally get there. Rather than cutting too much and then you have a gap here. All right. So I'll cut that and I'll show you the end result. And we got our weather strip fully installed all around. As you can see, here's your fitment. We can now install our cob thrust tunnel into our shroud like so. So this side matches up with the top of the holes that we created. Interior of the tunnel sticks in like that. And then if I flip this around on this side, we have our thrust tunnel on top of the shroud like so. And what we're going to do right now is just put in about five of the cob provided uh, nuts and bolts along the middle hole, the side holes here, and the side one there, and there. Just to hold this in place while we do the next step. And it should look something like this. With our cob air tunnel position, we're now going to use a sharpie or marker or whatever you have. Going to mark the center of each of these holes we're going to drill. And then at the bottom here, we're going to leave mark an edge. And that's going to be the line that we're later going to completely fill out. We're going to cut along this OEM tunnel. Now remove all the nuts and bolts we had previously installed. And then we'll take out the Cobb air tunnel. Like so. And on the original shroud here, where we have our markings, I'm going to get some type of straight edge, probably a piece of cardboard, so I can then draw a full line all across, and we're going to have to end up cutting that out in a moment. Now with our line drawn out, we're going to begin to cut it. And in my situation, I'm going to be using an X-Actor knife, and this should do the trick. Alright guys, I made the cut, as you can see here. Had to move into a new location. My other one's getting a little bit noisy. But uh, there we go, it seems relatively good. Might send it down in a bit, but let's first do a quick uh, fitment check with the, tun with the cop tunnel. So, we are going to install this on and we'll see how well it fits. Okay. On the edges, it's more or less good. If we flip this over, and I'll just get a good grip here, that's more or less on point. So, next step, we're almost done here before we begin final assembly of all the nuts and bolts. Is we're gonna grab our cobs, a uh, smaller weather strip. And we're just going to install it all along this edge here, like so, and then just trim off the excess with our wire cutters from before. So I'm going to do that in a moment and I'll be right back. Okay. Got my weather strip installed here, nice and tight. And now to finish off, where we marked our drill holes, I'm going to make a small pilot hole using a, in my case, it's just one sixteenth inch drill bit and after that we'll finish it off by doing a quarter inch size hole with all of our holes drilled in place we're now going to begin to install our nuts and washers we'll first start by putting in our tunnel here which ones this orientation Flipping this around. On this side, all across here, we'll first install our cob included bolt and plastic washer face side up. I'll do one as an example. 
We'll begin by inserting our bolt and plastic washer like so and tightening these by hand all across this side. Then we can use an M4 wrench to begin getting this a little bit tighter. With the nuts and bolts installed on this side, as so. We can now install the side ones. And we're going to make sure that the nut and the plastic washer go in from the outside. So we outside like so. And on this side, we'll make sure to put in our small metal washer. And lastly, we'll tighten down with the included nut. Make sure you have the plastic ring on the outside, else it's not going to come in properly. With the side nuts and bolts installed like so, we'll begin installing the final nuts and bolts on this top side, all along there, with the nut and plastic washer coming in from the top like so. And on the opposite side, right about there, we will insert it similar to the side, washer first, and then our nut. Now with all our nuts, bolts, and washers installed, we'll finish tightening them down using a 10 millimeter socket and an M4 Allen wrench. After that, we'll be all set to go and put this bad boy back in our car. Okay. We got our intake shroud right here, and we'll begin by reinstalling it back on top of the hood. And after that, we'll be all done. All right, and we're all done. As you can see here, it's all nice and snug. And it just fits right over the edge. If I can give you a better view on this side. There we go. Take a look. All right. So there we have it. Our new Cobb intercooler installed onto our 2023 WRX. And up next will be either the new charge pipe installation or intake pipe. Alrighty, and there we have it folks. I have a Cobb Center Cooler installed as part of my Stage 2 Performance Package Upgrade. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll make sure to answer them. And in addition, in the description, I left Cobb's official guide on how to install this. That you can use as a companion towards my video. And as always, thank you for watching.